Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day in the Word. And today is Tuesday of Holy Week. We're on our journey toward Holy Thursday, Good Friday, into uh, Easter Vigil and Easter Celebration on Sunday. And that's called the Holy Triduum, those, that time from Holy Thursday on. And here we are on Tuesday. And in our reading, we're actually going to jump ahead two days and we're going to meet Jesus in the upper room for a portion of what takes place there. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When he had said this, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out of whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one whom I, to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After he took the morsel, Satan entered into him. So Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now, none of those reclining at table realized why he had said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, Buy what we need for the feast, or give something to the poor so that he took the morsel and left it once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going you cannot follow me now, though you will follow me later. Jesus said, or Peter said to him, Master, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there's a lot here. And again, this is a part of the upper room uh, narrative, part of learning and growing in our understanding of what Jesus is going to institute in terms not only of the Lord's Supper, but also the mission and ministry of his disciples. And of course, a lot of what we see in this particular passage has to do with setting up the betrayal of, of Jesus to put in motion that which will not be able to be altered. But it's kind of like, again, on this Tuesday, we already are witnessing the fact that what is about to happen to Jesus can't stop. It's going to keep plowing forward no matter what. And at the beginning of the passage, it starts kind of oddly for, you know, again, we're picking it up in the middle of a chapter when it says, when he had said this, he was deeply troubled. Well, what he had, had he said? Well, he had begun already to hint at the fact that someone was going to betray him. And, um, and that's part of the thing that uh, will happen. He says, uh, the scripture will be fulfilled. The one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. So he's beginning to hint at the fact that there is a betrayer in the midst and, of course, this is already troubling to his spirit, not only because of what is about to take place, but what he is going to endure in just a number of hours. And we see that when he actually goes through the process of dipping the morsel 
and then handing it to Judas, that at that point, something very powerful is placed in the scripture by John as an observation. And when he took the, the morsel, Satan entered him. There was a sense in which taking that morsel was an acknowledgement because it was already announced that this will take place. And so at that point, it enters or Satan enters, he enters into the equation. And again, we see that what uh, Judas is doing is really cooperating with evil, cooperating with the intentions of Satan to destroy God the Son. And thereby, what he thinks is going to happen would be the destruction of any opportunity for redemption. But we know that there is a different end of the story. Now, at that point, of course, it gets very, very um, uh, dark in terms of the tone of what's happening at the Last Supper. Um, and, you know, John goes on to talk about how Jesus um, uh, had done this, and then they were wondering why he said to Judas what he had said in terms of what you're going to do, do quickly, and all of that. And I thought it was really, an, again, an interesting image that John leaves us with at the end of this little part of the passage. And he says, so Judas took the morsel and left it once, and it was night. And not only was it night chronologically, not only was it night in the, you know, in the darkness physically, but it was night spiritually. We were entering into a dark period just before the, the light, light of resurrection, resurrection is going to again dawn. dawn. But, but it's, it's going, going to get, get a, little a little bit darker. Because here's Peter and his opportunity of, of ministering uh, and being a part of what's going on. And, and he says to Jesus, Master, where are you going? Where I'm going, he says, you cannot follow. And, and Peter, again, in his boldness that he has had several times uh, throughout uh, his encounters with Jesus, again says, Master, why can't I follow you now? I'll lay down my life for you. Again, making those huge, huge uh, promises. Now, later he will fulfill that promise. And later he will be bold, not only in front of Jesus, but in front of the whole world. And the difference will come at Pentecost. But now Jesus challenges him at his words. And he says, will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The dark just got darker. Not only would the one who was already suspicious or been sus suspicioned of, of taking money and doing things, Judas was kind of always a little bit off put from the rest of the disciples. But here's Peter, the rock, the one that Jesus said would, would uh, keep the gates of hell from uh, prevailing and all of that. And here is Peter. And Jesus said, you're going to deny me. You're going to be one who does not affirm and accept who I really am publicly in front of others. To me, one of the things that we can focus on during this week is our own representation of who we are in front of other people. Are we willing to portray, to be who we are in front of others, or are there ways in which we subtly deny Jesus in the presence of other people. Perhaps when we're in a restaurant, we don't pray over our meal when we do it at home, or maybe we don't defend or identify ourselves as Catholic Christians. There are a lot of different ways in which we can do this. And maybe this week, one of the things we can purpose is as we enter into our, our celebration, our prayer, and our devotion to Jesus during this time, that upon our uh, leaving of uh, our journey on Easter Sunday, as we go out in the Feast of the Resurrection to a season of resurrection, that one of the things we will take with us is the resurrection of life of Jesus in us and through us, that we will be for others uh, that testimony of who he is. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
Thank you again for this time. This has really been a good uh, time to just reflect upon our anticipation of Holy Thursday and all that is set in motion by uh, Judas Iscariot. We're going to see a little bit more about that tomorrow. And then, of course, on Holy Thursday, we begin this amazing journey in the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.